Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the painting process that I use to get my Angron ready for the tabletop. So without further ado, let's get started. To make my life easier, especially with getting to the details on the back of the model, I decided to paint Angron in a sub-assembly. I assembled the entire torso and then made the wings and arms separate pieces that I could paint on their own. I primed the model with Grey Seer from Citadel and then I began painting Angron's flesh using Blood Angel's Contrast from the Citadel range. I do enjoy working with contrast paint as it's really easy to work into some of the deeper recesses of a model like Angron and it's just a really quick and easy way to pull out some of the really intricate details of his musculature. For his wings, I went in with a coat of Black Templar Contrast. You want to really be careful about how you apply this as we don't want to get it on any of the red that we've already painted. I definitely made a few mistakes during this step, but if you make any mistakes, not a problem. Just come in with a fine detail brush, add in a little bit of Gracier, and then go over that with your Blood Angels Red. For Angron's fur, I wanted it to be dark, but I wanted to have a little bit of a distinction between the fur and the wings. So I came in with some Basilicum Grey contrast paint, to which I'd mixed in a little bit of Gnome Oil. It did thin down the paint, so I had to do a couple of coats, but overall I think it gave a nice contrast between a dark black fur and the more leathery black that I wanted for the wings. Next it was time to start work on the armor, and I decided to start off with a layer of Brass Scorpion around the trim of the armor. Now I know Angron's armor is supposed to be all brass according to the lore, but there's just something that I really love about that Heresy Arrow War Leaders look with the white armor splattered in blood and gore, so I decided to only put the brass around the outside rather than painting everything, leaving myself a nice white canvas to splatter with blood at a later point. To add a little bit more detail to the white armor, I came in with some Apothecary White contrast paint and just tried to push it into all of the recesses where the armor meets the trim. I figured that the slight bluish gray that you find in Apothecary White would help give the armor a little bit more detail and give it a little bit of an older aged feeling to it, like it was originally this nice pure white but over time that white has dulled a little bit. For all of the leather bits on the model I decided to go with Snakebite Leather from the Contrast range. I felt like the lighter tannish brown of this paint would match my overall color scheme better than the black from the box art, as the black would just make the model a little bit too dark. Plus, the leather kind of reminded me of a lot of gladiator movies that I watched growing up, and given Angron's history as a gladiator in the fighting pits of his home world, I figured that I could pay a little bit of tribute to that by going with a bit more of a utilitarian gladiatorial color. For the two bits of cloth that are hanging from Angron's waist, I decided to again dip into the Citadel Contrast range and grab some Ultramarine Blue. Again, I'm paying tribute to that heresy arrow world leader scheme that I really love, and it just provides a subtle little pop of color that breaks up the model. Again, I know it's not lore accurate, but I really do love how it looks. For all of these insulated cables that we see across the model going through the armor as well as accompanying some of the butcher's nails going into Angron's head, I decided to go with Snakebite Leather. I originally tried out doing this in Ultramarine's Blue, but Angron was starting to get a little bit of a Captain America vibe with that, so I instead just decided to really lean into that leather utilitarian look, and Snakebite Leather was just the perfect contrast paint for me to get into all the little cracks and crevices of these cables and really bring out their details. At this point in my painting process, I couldn't ignore the World Eaters logo anymore, it just had to be painted. So. I came in with a layer of Ultramarine's Blue to fill in all of the ocean parts on the World Eaters logo. Unfortunately, the warp ate my footage of painting the land section, but for that I used Militarm Green Contrast. For all of the various vents, chains, and exposed cables on the model, I came in with a coat of Lead Belcher. For all of the bony extrusions on the tail, as well as the talons on the wings and the hooves, I decided to go with Skeleton Horde Contrast. Again, I'm not going with the black from the box art, as I just felt with the lighter color scheme that I'm going with that the black would be just a little bit too much of a shock distinction and it wouldn't blend in overall with the look that I wanted. I also use Skeleton Horde for all of the skulls that are on the model. Let's face it, if you got a paint called Skeleton Horde, it's probably going to work really well for skulls, and it does. At this point, the brass scorpion was looking just a little bit flat to me, so I came in with a layer of Reichland Flesh Slate. Flesh Shade, say that five times fast, 
lost just to go over and bring out some of the details. Also, at this point, ignore that the sword has been partially painted. My painting process is not orderly. I admit that. We'll cover that a little bit later in the video. Over any of the areas that were painted with lead belcher, I came in with a shade of just pure and null oil to, again, just help bring out some of those shadows and overall enhance the detail of the model. Once the washes had dried, I came in and applied a quick dry brush over all the metal areas to just help bring out some of the higher details. Over the brass, I used Psycrax Bronze, and over the steel, I just used Lead Belcher again. With that all finished, let's jump back to the sword. I started off by painting the interior chasm with Eand in yellow, as I kind of had the idea that I wanted to do a slightly molten core for the sword. For the body of the blade, I decided to go with Black Templar Contrast. I really like working with this paint because it allows you to get a really nice, deep black while still having a little bit of variation in color that adds some visual interest to the model. Once that had dried, I came in with some Griffhound Orange and applied that essentially as a contrast dry brush over the center of the blade where the yellow was. This just really helped pick out the top of the skulls with that orange and enforced that the heat was being lost over the top of the blade, but that the interior of the core was still hot with that yellow color. Next, I came in over the black areas of the blade and did a quick dry brush of Dark Reaper. I was a little bit messy with this, just kind of attacking the blade with different angles, just to kind of show different sources of light bouncing off the black blade. I wasn't really going with any particular pattern, just kind of trying my luck and seeing what would look cool. Lastly, I came in with a dry brush of Rust Gray. Again, I came with kind of the same chaotic pattern and just kind of kept my eye on it as I developed the shading just to see if I was happy with what I was doing. Now that I was pretty much done with the model, it was time to start working on the base and I wanted to do one of my lava bases to blend it in with all of my other chaos miniatures. To start off, I grabbed some Vallejo water texture and applied that around the rim of the base. I haven't been able to find this stuff recently and I'm starting to run low, so I decided that I would mix in a couple of different water effect resins as opposed to this one which is definitely my favorite. Once I let the Vallejo resin dry overnight, I was able to come in with the off-brand water resin that I had found in my local hobby shop. This stuff is a lot more liquid than the Vallejo resin I like working with, so I created that ring around the outside in order to help contain it and keep it on the base. At this point, I just wanted to get a nice even coating all over the base that I could come back and work with later as the resin started to dry. Once the resin dries for a couple of hours, you'll feel it start to become tackier and you can come in with a metal sculpting tool and start to put in a little bit of a texture to it. For me, again, I'm going with a lava base, so I kind of want the lava to be rolling and flowing a little bit. But if you don't want to add texture, you could leave this flat and then paint over it with Blood for the Blood God or something similar to give Angron a nice blood pool to stand in. However, I am doing lava for my base, so I began painting on a layer of Amarillo Yellow from Vallejo. I was a little surprised at how well the resin took the paint, but hey, I was happy with that. Only took me about two layers of the yellow to really get a nice, solid color across the entire base. For the rocks on the base, I used the exact same technique that I used to paint Angron's sword, again keeping with that volcanic feel. Therefore, I gave everything a nice full coat of Black Templar Contrast paint. It was at this point in painting that I realized I had missed two key details on Angron, his eyes and his tongue. So to do his eyes, I put in another layer of gray seer and then came in with this .05mm pen and just dotted his eyes. I love this pen for doing eyes, it makes them so much simpler than trying to get in there with a brush. After a little bit of debate, I decided to go with Volupus Pink for the tongue. That way it would still give the same pink nature that we expect from a tongue, but it would just be a little bit darker and it felt a little bit more appropriate for a demon. After that slight detour, it was back to the rocks on Angron's base for a dry brush of Dark Reaper. This was followed up again by a dry brushing of Rust Gray to really pick out those high points and add a little bit of light to the rocks. After that, I turned my attention back to the lava with a heavy dry brush of Vallejo's Orange Fire. I wanted to get about a 60% coverage over the yellow to help start building up that lava effect as it transitions from the yellow to orange to red to eventually black. Obviously all of these skulls on the base after being cleaned up a little bit got a nice coating of skeleton aboard. Once the orange had dried, I came in with a final dry brush of Vallejo's bloody red. 
again just trying to build up that transition, pick out some of the highest points in red, and try to get the lava to feel like it has a natural flow to it by how I pattern in the red. There's no real specific technique to this, you just have to kind of look at it and do what feels natural. While I let the red set, it was time to apply some blood and gore. I tore off the tip of a dollar store sponge brush, dipped it into my pot of blood for the blood god, and then dabbed out some of the excess on my palette paper. After that, I just started dabbing the blood onto the model wherever I saw fit. You can do as much or as little of this as you want, but given that this is Angron, by the end of it, there was going to be a lot of blood. Once I was happy with the amount of gore, I came back to the lava base with just a plain black craft paint and began to do a really light dry brush over the top of the lava flow. This is going to show those parts of the lava that have kind of hardened and cooled, but are just cracking over the surface as the lava continues to flow. Now at this point you could just paint the rim of the base black and call it done, but I like to go one step further and incorporate the rim of the base into my entire basing scheme. So to get things back to the base color and have a nice clean surface to work on, I paint the rim of the base with a layer of gray sear. Once the gray sear is dry, I basically do a wet blend of Ian and yellow, Griffhound Orange and Blood Angels Red around the base in a fairly sporadic and random pattern, just trying to recreate the randomness of the lava flow on top around the rim of the base. After everything is dry, I come in and apply a layer of Art Coat Gloss Varnish just to protect all the work that I've done against this final step. That last step is applying a layer of Mordant Earth around the entire rim of the base. This paint gives a really nice cracked earth effect which is great for the top of lava, but However, when it does pull away, it does have a tendency to pull the contrast paint off with it. So by adding that layer of varnish, it helps protect the paint underneath and leave it visible through the cracks of the Morden Earth once it dries. And with that, Angron, the demon primarch of the World Eaters, is ready to spill blood for the Blood God and claim skulls for the Skull Throne. If you guys like this tutorial, you want to see more of my work, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up to date on all of our future projects. If there's anything you guys would like to see me do here on the channel, leave me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Saga.